Hey everybody, it's Pax. Welcome back for the final scenario of Alice in Wonderland. We're continuing on with the interlude, The White Queen. If the investigators went down the rabbit hole, skip to Seeking Escape. The placid countryside does little to ease your mind as you continue your, en your endless trek. The dangers of Alice's dream world are constant, but in inconsistent. Any creature, object, or bit of scenery could prove to be a maddening menace. You wonder if the threats are the simple corruptions they seem to be, or if they were always a part of Alice's mind, always ready to erupt during a vulnerable moment. Should you find your way out of this strange place, would Alice be, be, be the better for it, to say nothing of Arkham? Your mind focuses on this dazed line of thinking as the landscape transitions from wide orderly fields to a dense tangle of flowers. Proceed to future memories. The path before you wends its way through a lush garden of flowering plants. The many blossoms turn towards you as you pass one by one, revealing cracked and distorted faces. The flowers titter between each other with discordant chorus, watching and commenting as you walk. They utter fatalistic words about you and your quest, and of the ever-growing hunger of Garathnaka. You hurry forward, doing your best to ignore the disturbing plants. The overgrown garden finally opens around the base of a lone tree, which, under which an equally solitary figure paces. The silhouette of a chess queen is unmistakable in the pale woman who mumbles to herself in a steady drone. You approach, but she turns towards you with a distant smile, before you even think to call for her attention. Ah, you arrive at last. I remembered that we would meet here. You wrinkle your brow at the statement, only causing the queen to chuckle lightly. And I recalled that expression of yours as well. But it is no simple task remembering the future, especially memories of such a dark and dismal future as yours. She stares at you, almost as though staring through you, and you find her eyes pale and cloudy, with a dark emptiness gnawing inward from the rims. The White Queen's smile grows forlorn as she continues her stare. Would you like to hear your future history? The investigators must decide. We're going to go ahead with, if you know what dangers lie ahead, please tell everything. Proceed to forewarned. The White Queen nods and opens her eyes wide, the cloudiness spewing forth like a plume of smoke. The white haze envelops you in an instant, and for a silent moment you are lost in the fog. The suspense fades slowly as the clouds collect into shapes, some familiar, others new and frightening. The Queen's voice echoes from all around you, as you observe each of the figures, which morph and reform to reflect your thoughts. Memories are strange things, you know. Each person recalls them differently. The nearest cloud takes on your own appearance, and the others drift towards it, forming a strange tableau. The White Queen's voice continues, seeming more and more distant with each word. There are those who say that the future is set in stone, but in truth, it is more like cement. It takes some time. Is set. In your campaign log, record one tally mark under Strength of Wonderland. In your campaign log, under Wonderland Boons, record the White Queen. And finally, add one Elder Thing token to the Chaos Bag for the remainder of the campaign. Skip to Guidance from Alice. Between blinks, the enveloping haze vanishes, and the White Queen along with it. You still stand beneath the solitary tree, but the surrounding flowers have all wilted. You hold your breath for a moment in unconscious reflex as you wait for any faint sound from the eerie blossoms, but without result. Slowly, their fallen petals shift on the wind, forming larger shapes in the dry grass around you. Lines and contours run together, and all at once, the image clarifies into Alice's sleeping face. It shifts, as if breathing in, holding for a moment before blowing upward in a funneled gale. The petals soar, swirling around and suspending in midair to form a line, a path. You're unsure of what state Alice might be in, but it appears that she still has the ability to help guide you through her dream. You follow the floating blossoms out of the bizarre garden without delay. If the investigators went down the rabbit hole, proceed to Scenario 3, Lucid Nightmare. But first, let's take a look at our deck upgrades going into the final scenario. So we had six experience uh, last scenario. Uh, we lost our two flares from exiling, and so in place of the two, one of the flares, I'm going to be picking up a, uh, an act of desperation. Uh, I'd, I'd gone down to one on my stick to the plan earlier in the campaign, and I, I think I'm happy to have a second one there. 
Um, two of my Vicious Blows are being replaced with leveled up Vicious Blows. I think that's really going to be useful to help round out um, how long it takes to get uh, weapons sometimes for my deck. And then finally I'm adding in a second Survival Knife uh, just to kind of round out again the combat side. Um, I, I think I've had a bit of struggles throughout the campaign making sure that I always have a weapon in play. That'll all help. Over here on Norman, uh, for our 6 XP, we're, we're dropping two deductions and an Arcane Enlightenment. We're adding in a second copy of Storm of Spirits. Uh, I kind of like having a little bit of a combat option in him, so Storm of Spirits fits that quite nicely. We're getting a second copy of Order Protection. Uh, global cancellation effects are really good, usually doubly so in final scenarios. And we're also picking up a single copy of Earthly Serenity's level, uh, sorry, Earthly Serenity level one. Um, I figure it's not an amazing card, but it could be really clutch in the finale. You never know how much damage someone's going to output on the final scenario. Enemies tend to be pretty tough. But more importantly, getting rid of that weakness, that arm injury, I believe it was, um, that proved to be kind of annoying. And I'd love to have just like one card in the deck. We, we rock it through this deck. So having one card in the deck that can take that out, maybe heal a bit um, of damage or horror, whatever's afflicting us, that seems pretty good to me. Scenario 3, Lucid Nightmare. If the investigators went down the rabbit hole, read Out the Looking Glass. The scattered petals weave in an inconstant route over the meadows and dales. Your doubts are silenced as the flowers scatter in sight of an English country home, this one much more familiar. The house is identical to the strange empty one that manifested in Arkham, though it is mirrored from what you remember. You enter the house with a rush of excitement all the same, though uncertain what you will find inside. Unlike the barren cottage you explored not so long ago, this house is filled with an uncomfortable clutter, and most of it levitating in random spots. Finding a passage through the rooms proves more difficult than you expected, but at last, you make your way to the strange parlor you briefly viewed through the mirror in Ar Arkham. A mirror also adorns this mantle, but the reflection is clouded by darkness, so much that you can barely make out your own image on it. You place a hand on the mirror and press gently and it bows like a rotted timber. With few other options, you scale the fireplace and lean forward into the malleable mirror. Skip to Arkham Unraveling. You emerge to a view of utter pandemonium. From the damaged landmarks you can identify, you stand on the border between Arkham's north side and Mer Merchant District, though the former seems nothing more than a shadowy void. From the fading twilight, you can only conclude that you've been gone from Arkham for a matter of minutes, in spite of the days and nights you spent in Wonderland. Your bewildered observation is interrupted by an unearthly noise, one that you know in your soul could only be made by one thing. You turn towards the south side of the city to gaze at the shadowy form of Gorathnaka. Check the campaign log under Strength of Wonderland. I haven't been uh, showing this very often, but uh, we currently have 19. If there are 19 tally marks, skip to Consuming Dreams. It takes you several moments even to perceive the true form of Garathnaka. Through all of your travels, you never imagined the dark entity could fill your heart with such terror. Proceed to Alice Awakens. Right this way, dear Alice, they arrived not a moment ago. From behind you, the familiar tone of the Cheshire Cat sounds, and you catch a glimpse of its fading smile as Alice sta herself staggers into view. Her entire body shifts with relief at the sight of you in return. You made it, she breathes with disbelief evident in her voice. I had hoped in earnest that you would, but in all my dreams, Alice winces in sudden pain and clutches her temples as Garothnaka lets loose another unnatural roar across the shattered cityscape. You help Alice steady herself and try to gauge her state of mind. Check the campaign log under Fragments of Alice. Well, we just looked at that a moment ago. If there are between two and four fragments listed, skip to half a mind. Alice takes several moments to compose herself before she looks to you, still a bit dazed. I feel like a jigsaw puzzle only halfway finished, she, she says with a hollow voice. You suggest that Alice take some time to recover, but she refuses as her gaze drifts to Gurathnaka nearby. Rest will only be of help once we banish these terrible creatures. I cannot sit idly by. As always, a lot of the uh, setup is done in Tabletop Simulator. Thank you very much for that amazing implementation, Beard. Uh, so yeah, you gather the sets, you check your campaign log, and gather the Wonderland boons, and uh, set them aside. Taking a quick look here at our new White Queen boon. Uh, she has the same sort of ability surge, put her into play with the agenda deck. 
when an Elder Thing token is revealed. Cancel that token. Do not reveal another token. Discard her. Put the Alice Little Investigator into play next to the Act deck. Build Alice's deck. See Alice's assistance on the next page. Shuffle Alice's deck and put it into play next to the Act deck. Lay out the top three cards of the deck as Alice's hand. Alice's assistance. In this scenario, Alice joins as an additional investigator with some differences. She does not count as an investigator for anything that uses the per investigator multiplier. She cannot take actions or gain resources, but draws during each upkeep phase until she has three cards in her hand. Enemies cannot engage or attack Alice, and she does not draw an encounter card during the Mythos phase. Alec Alice has a unique deck of 24 cards that is built according to your choices, successes, and failures in your path through Wonderland. First, add all three copies of Shadow Str Strain to Alice's deck. And then we go through this massive laundry list of every card that gets added to her deck. Here's what the deck ends up looking like. Like I said, you get three copies of uh, Shadow Strain here. Um, all of these, I believe, get put into play next to Alice with a forced ability that discards them at the end of the round. Um, so there's Alice's Courage from Finding Her Courage from the Fragments of Alice, Intuition, Patience, Curiosity, all a bunch of cool effects. We got Lack of Reason for Failing to Do Her Reason and Lack of Compassion for Failing to Find Her Compassion. But for all of the rest of them, uh, we've got the Brother in Arms, Tweedle and Tweedledum. We've got the White King, the White Knight. Um, I believe this is from Slaying the Jabberwock. The Best Butter from the Mad Hatter and the Hare. The Walrus. The uh, Successful Snark Hunt. The Red Queen. And um, having let the White Rabbit survive the monster's attack. So we've got a whole bunch of really interesting effects on these. I'm not going to go through every single one of them in detail. Um, just know that they're going to be coming up throughout the scenario, and I guess I'll be dealing with them as they come up. So our final step during her setup phase is putting, uh, shuffling the deck and putting the top three cards face up as her hand. Great. We'll take a look at those as we get into the scenario. Set the following locations aside, out of play, north side, downtown, east town, and the vacuous void. Put the Merchant District, Rivertown, Miskatonic University, French Hill, Uptown, and south side locations into play. Wonderland side revealed. Each investigator, including Alice, begins play at the Merchant District. Here we are with all of our guys in play at the Merchant District. All of our scenario connectivity. We'll take a look at the abilities in a moment. And then check the campaign log under Strength of Wonderland. If there are 19 tally marks, put Gruthnaka, Gorged Eater of Dreams, into play at Rivertown. Remove all other versions of Gruthnaka from the game. So do we get the Atrophy Eater? Haggard, Ravenous, Satiated, Gorged. He's the 5-5, massive, retaliate, alert, cannot be damaged, cannot make attacks of opportunity during move actions. Investigators cannot use Alice's ability or Elder Sign effect during attack or evade attempts against Garoth Naka. Lovely. And he's at Rivertown. Which just happens to be right next to us. Lovely. Finally, we put the Cheshire Cat, Grinning Guide, into play in the lead investigator's play area and shuffle the remainder of the encounter cards to build the encounter deck. So let's go ahead and do our opening hands, because we're kind of doing that in the wrong order once again. Uh, over here on Tommy, we get a Bandolier, Jessica Hyde, a Cherished Keepsake. It's just blowing a Vorpal Blade. Cursed me, I didn't uh, put my cards aside for Stick to the Plan. But you and I both already know it's Ever Vigilant, Marksmanship, and Active Desperation. Um, I think this is actually a pretty good opening hand. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I could get uh, Bandolier, Vorpal Blade, and Jessica Hyde into play uh, for a single action. Um, I'm tempted to turf the Cherished Keepsake um, for something better. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that, actually. Yeah. See if we can get something else. The Executioner's Axe. Well, still fine. And then over here on Norman Withers, we're going to get the following. An Arcane Enlightenment, a Storm of Spirits, the Hierophant, a Eureka, and Quick Thinking. Well, we're definitely keeping Hierophant to get that into play. That'll be handy, I think. Uh, as for the rest of these, I think an Arcane Enlightenment isn't super useful early. I'd rather hit a quick thinking with uh, an Astrological Atlas. And once and I think Tommy's well set enough for Storm to not be necessary early. So let's just go with a couple of extra cards. Very happy with that. That is excellent. All right, so let's shuffle those away. And we'll reveal that top card. You have got to be joking. Well, I guess that's what happens, and then we'll shove the Hierophant into play. Here's what our Chaos Bag looks like for now. Um, skulls are minus two, minus four instead if there's more total damage and horror on Alice than on your Investigator. 
Uh, cultists are a minus two, minus four instead if you're at a Wonderland or a Shadow location, which, by the way, I, I've already taken a quick look. All of them are Wonderland locations at the moment. Um, the tablet is minus two, minus four instead if there are three or fewer Wonderland locations in play, so that means we're going to be getting us out of Wonderland. And finally, the Elder Thing is minus two if Girth Knock is at your location, reveal another token. So minus twos are pretty, that's a pretty sizable chunk of the bag right there. Minus four is also nice. And let's take a look at our act and agenda. The stability of Arkham continues to degrade as it had when you first entered Wonderland. Darkness spreads from the north half of the city, and with it, Grothnaka and its minions. Shadows greedily consume everything in their path like a forest fire, gorging and growing steadily stronger. Alice Little cannot take control of the Cheshire Cat. Enemies cannot engage, attack, or target Alice Little when moving via the Hunter keyword. At the end of the enemy phase, move Grothnaka one location towards the location with the most investigators. Forced, if Alice is defeated, R2. Separating Fantasy. Shards and echoes of Wonderland pervade the familiar districts of Arkham. The only way you'll be able to banish the shadows is to purge the parts of the city overlapping with Alice's dreams. It is finally time for you to leverage what you learned in your journey. At the start of the investigator phase, the investigators as a group must choose and play one card from Alice's hand. Then, you may move Alice to any connecting location. After you successfully attack Grothnaka, discover a clue at your location. Oh, interesting. Cool. Objective, if there are no Wonderland locations in play, you must immediately advance. So taking a quick look at all the locations, we start at the Merchant District. It's a two-shroud, four-clue location. Investigate double Merchant District Shroud for this test. If you succeed, discover an additional clue. If you fail, discard a card from your hand at random and lose a resource. Limit one success per turn. If there are no clues on Merchant District, flip it. River Town, come hell or high water. Five Shroud, one clue uh, per investigator. Test three agility. If you succeed, River Town gets minus three shroud until the end of the phase. If you fail, take a damage. Okay, and if there are no clues, flip it. French Hill, minus three shroud. While there are any amount of doom on enemies at French Hill or treacheries attached to French Hill, place doom on an enemy at French Hill or a treachery attached to French French Hill is a fast triggered ability. Forced if there are no clues on it, flip it. Okay, that's two clues. Five shroud, four clue location. Action, investigate. When you initiate this test, discard the top card of your deck. If that card is a weakness, draw it. Otherwise, you get plus X to this test, where X is the cost of the discarded card. If there are no clues on Miskatonic University, flip it. Uptown, five shroud. Holy man, these are some high shroud values. Uh, two clues per investigator. Search your deck or draw uh, discard pile for a weakness and draw it. If you drew a weakness, discover two clues on Uptown. Limit once per turn. If there are no clues on Uptown, flip it. Finally, south side, not your cup of tea. Five Shroud, two clues. Test three willpower. If you succeed, South Side gets minus three Shroud until the end of the phase. If you fail, take one horror. Limit one successes per round. If there are no clues on South Side, flip it. So, pretty high Shroud values overall. We've got five fives. Uh, he's going to be chasing us, chasing Alice to be precise. And we're going to need to get away from him. So... I guess first things first is at the start of our first investigator phase, the investigators as a group have to choose and play a card from Alice's hand. Then we may move Alice to any connecting location. Well, let's take a look at these cards. We've got her Curiosity. After an investigator moves, that investigator gets plus one on all skill tests until the end of his or her turn. At the end of the round, discard it. The Queen's Justice. At the end of the investigator phase, deal one damage to each enemy in play. For each enemy defeated by this effect, each investigator other than Alice may gain one resource. Well, that's not happening this turn. And Intuition... When an investigator would play an event, that event gains fast. Limit once per investigator. I think we're going to be playing Alice's Intuition. We'll uh, put that right there, I guess, to show that it's what, the one that's active. Uh, so when it, when we play events, they can gain fast. We'll be using that to get our Ever Vigilant out uh, an action sooner. So we'll start off with Tommy. Um, what we'll do is we'll do one draw action for a combat training. That's cool to see. Uh, and we're just going to slam that right into play, I think. And then next, we're going to take another draw action for Becky. Cool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, tap our stick to the plan to play Ever Vigilant fast, playing three assets, reducing the cost of each by one. So one for Bandolier, one two for Jessica, with two damage, and one two for, let's go ahead and choose the... The Vorpal Blade, or sorry, the Executioner's Axe, because I believe that's a higher chance overall of getting the additional modifier. 
uh, for the remaining two. And then last action, we're going to take an investigate here at the Merchant District. Now, we are three against two, um, but we're going to go ahead and use Alice's reaction ability. When an investigator would, at Alice's location would test with any skill, use her base intellect for that skill instead. So we're going to be testing uh, four against two. Uh, and also, I didn't read this part, but her elder sign is in effect a plus zero choose and shuffle a card from your discard pile back into your deck. Any investigator at Alice's location may use this effect instead of their own elder sign effect, which is really nice for both of them. But anyways, we're testing uh, four against two Shroud. And we pull Occultist which is currently a minus four, so we do fail that test. Over here on Norman, we're gonna just go ahead and double action to remove the Harbinger, which reveals the next card on our deck. And now we're gonna be able to play this Deep Knowledge fast, uh, and that's really cool. So, we're gonna go ahead and play the Deep Knowledge fast. We're gonna add two curses to the bag, one, two. Um, and how are we gonna divide these cards up? I'm gonna go ahead and give two draws to Tommy. Dormouse and a Glory, cool. And one draw to Norman, which is a Storm of Spirits, and then we reveal a Foresight on the top of the deck. Great. Uh, last action, we're going to go ahead and go one, two, three for our astrono uh, Astronomical Atlas, uh, which we're going to put this bad boy right there. And we're going to use that to look at the top card of the deck and attach it face down to the Astronomical Atlas. So this will be for this one. If I have my other one out, I'll put it right there. So we've got a Foresight there, and now we've got Shortcut on top of the deck, which we cannot play at the moment, because uh, we've already used that ability once this turn. At the end of the enemy phase, we move Gurath Naka to the location with the most amount of Investigators, which is going to be here back at the uh, Merchant District. Fortunately, that's at the end, so he's not making any attacks or anything like that. Do our upkeep for Tommy, and another Ever Vigilant. That's really nice to see. And our upkeep for Norman. Another Foresight on top. Very cool. Uh, we also get an upkeep on uh, Alice, which draws her next card of her deck, and this intuition goes to her discard pile, which I'll just call right there. Uh, courage, when an investigator engages or becomes engaged with an enemy, that investigator may draw a card. Ooh, cool. And then we uh, start the next phase, which is Mythos. We get one Doom out of seven, and we get our encounter cards. Vanished away. Uh, he heads over to Norman. And then that surges into Disjunction. Discard any number of cards from your hand or from play, whose total cost is equal to or greater than your location shroud value. If you cannot, take one damage and one horror. Well, okay, we definitely can. We're currently at a shroud value of two, and I have a feeling that Becky is not going to be the most useful for me at the moment. Um, it is nice to have, though. So I think we're going to be getting rid of our Warble Blade. Oh, and I forgot to take all the damage off of Jessica at the end of her first turn. That's fine. Over here on Norman, we're going to be getting Haunting Shade. He's aloof. Location gets plus two Shroud. If there are no clues on its location, it loses aloof and gets plus one fight and plus one damage. So we'll be sitting here at the location with Gareth Naka. Now we're at the start of our next investigation phase. We're at the start of our next investigator phase, so we can choose and play one card from her hand. I think we're going to go ahead and get her Curiosity into play. That'll give us plus one on all of our skill tests until the end of our turn, uh, after we've moved. And uh, we're also going to choose to do her move this time. So we're going to go ahead and have her relocate over to uh, French Hill. We're going to go ahead and have Norman go first. Uh, we do need to move out of the location to pretty much be able to do anything, so let's go ahead and do that first. We're going to move over to Rivertown. And then we're going to uh, use our Astronomical Atlas to put our next Foresight onto our Atlas, revealing the next top card of our deck. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to investigate our location, testing five against five. We're going to uh, commit one of our Foresights and a Eureka. That'll put us five, six, seven, eight against five plus one, so that's successful. So we're going to be adding Foresight to our hand. Oh, of course it's going to do this thing again to me. Uh, we're going to be triggering Eureka to look at the top three cards of the deck, drawing one of them. Let's get this Crystalline Elder Sign into my hand, I believe. Let's do that. 
Shuffle those. New top card is a perception, cool. And we get a clue from the location. And then finally, we're going to use our last action to pop a foresight off of our astronomical atlas. Investigating again, five, six, seven against five. Minus one, perfect. So this will also go to my hand. Come on. And then I'll get that last clue. And now that there's no clues on Rivertown, we get to flip it. Uh, smooth sailing. The waters of the Miskatonic have receded, though the surface still churns with each ripple of reality. Three shrouds, zero clues. Now over on Tommy, um, he is going to have to move as well. Important to note here, remember Growth Naka doesn't make attacks of opportunity to remove actions, so it's not a big deal that we're moving away. We're not uh, failing any, failing to miss, sorry, failing to uh, recognize attacks of opportunity. Um, he's just going to be moving out for the purpose of moving out, and he's going to follow Norman. Um, because he goes to where the most investigators are, and I kind of don't want him to be stacked up on Alice, if possible. And since we're just kind of staying ahead, we're going to go ahead and take a resource, and then take a draw card, which is our next bandolier, which isn't super useful, but it's it's good icons, and that means we can let this one die and reshuffle it if we really need to. The Haunting Shade does uh, move to us. He goes like this, and then he... Uh, loses aloof, so we'll have him engage Tommy here. And then he makes an attack with one damage and one horror, uh, which unfortunately is going to have to go on my combat training, because I cannot take non-direct damage. So one damage, one horror, and this is going to get shuffled away for two resources. And again, at the end of my turn, I did fail to remove one from Jessica, so I'll just take that now. At the end of the enemy phase, Growth Naka sh shifts over to us, because this, this is where the most investigators are. We do our upkeep, which is an act of desperation. And the perception that was on top. And another perception on top as well. Great. So maybe we'll be able to pass some of more of these uh, investigates. Alice's curiosity goes away, and we get Alice's patience. After investigator resolves a test where he or she committed a skill card to that test, that investigator may draw a card. Ooh, there we go. Get an extra doom. On the agenda, two out of seven. And then encounter card. Get the lion and the unicorn. If it, after an enemy is defeated or discarded, each investigator may heal a damage or horror. It's just going to go up there. And the animated shadow. X is equal to the investigator's... Uh, sorry, the engaged investigator's base combat. Cannot make attacks of opportunity or be engaged by other investigators. If he is evaded, defeat it. If the investigator engaged with animated shadow is defeated or resigns, discard the animated shadow. Okay, so he's going to be a little tricky to get off of us. And then Norman gets the vanished away. This heads back to Tommy. And then that also surges into Spatial Stutter. Test 3, Agility. If you fail, resolve the following. Move to a location and take 2 damage, or move to a location exactly 2 connections away from your location and take 1 damage. Then if there are more clues on your new location than your previous location, take a Horror. Well, I think we're going to be taking the 2 moves and taking a Horror for it. But the question is, how far do we want to go? Where do we want to go? What do we want to do with it? I'm sitting on a lot of money right now, so I don't want to take that basic weakness uh, the one that lets me draw weaknesses out of my deck. And so I'm tempted to head just down to the south side and get going on getting rid of these clues. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do one, two moves and take a horror. Now it's Alice's turn to get a card into play. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and get the Alice's Patience. That's a good draw acceleration for us. And uh, I still think that the Queen's Justice is kind of not doing a whole lot for me. Tommy's going to kill these guys. He's not going to sit around and let them take a damage. And then we are going to go ahead and give her a move. I think we're going to move her uh, just an extra location away from Gareth Naka down here to Uptown. So we're going to go ahead on Tommy and take some fight actions against these guys. Um, I'm only two up against him and three up against the Haunting Shade. I don't need the money right now from this Act of Desperation. I'd rather commit it. So let's commit an Act of Desperation to fighting the Animated Shadow with our Executioner's Axe. So we're getting four, five, six, seven, eight against four. Zero. Great. Uh, he's toast. There you go. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and make another attack against the Haunting Shade here. We are three up against him. And we'll go ahead and just take that. Skull. I can either treat that token's modifier as zero or deal an additional damage. Well, I'm going to treat it as zero because I only need to deal... Two damage to this guy, so he's toast. Um, after an enemy is defeated, we can uh, heal damage or horror. Well, I don't want to use that right now. I'd rather save that for if the arm injury needs to come into play. 
And then we're just going to take a move away from Grothnaka. We're going to head back to the Merchant District. And that puts us on Norman Wither's turn. So we're going to go ahead and use the Astronomical Atlas to put Perception there. Because we want to pass some big tests in a moment. Ooh, an Earthly Serenity. That'll be nice to get into play for free uh, with our Foresight. We don't really need it right now. So I'm a little tempted to just kind of draw through it with a Perception. See something else that we might need a bit more. And with the sheer amount of icons we have right now, I'm really tempted to go ahead and just try to finish the location with Brute Force rather than attempt that willpower test. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to commit the Perception off of this and one of our Foresights. That'll put us at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 against 5 Tablet, which is currently a minus 2, so that is a success. So the Foresight goes to the discard, the Perception draws us a card, and then also goes to our hand at the end of the test. Come on. Here we go. And then we get the clue from the location. Border protection is nice to see. I think we're going to go ahead and play one for 1, 2, 3, the Crystalline Elder sign. And it's just kind of giving us a boost overall to all of our stats. Uh, plus, in a moment, we're going to be cranked out on our hand size. So let's not deal with that quite yet. Um, and then last, we're going to investigate with a Perception... And you know what? Do I have any other icons I'm willing to lose? Not really. No. Just the perception. So that'll be us 8 against 5. Minus 1. Great. So perception draws us a card. That goes to the discard. Reveal the top card. Ooh, Eureka. That's good to see too. Let me get the final clue from Southside. Flipping it. T and sympathy. Southside once again sits in quiet seclusion stark contrast to the roiling chaos just north of it. And you know, I did forget about this effect throughout that turn, um, but let's just say after we resolve that test where we committed a skill card to that test, that, that very last one, let's take a card draw. Because I really need to see my divinations. Uh, okay, research librarian, that's fine. Uh, and now Gareth Naka is going to move to the uh, location with the most investigators, which means he's either going to move on to Tommy, because that's one location with one investigator, or the Miskatonic University, or the French Hill. Now, I think I want Tommy to come get some clues here, because he can get Dendromorphosis out and uh, be pretty happy just getting that into play. French Hill is going to take us a while to figure out how we can do that. I need, like, an enemy to spawn there, place a Doom on it. Maybe. I can also just get the two clues off of it with Norman. So we're going to go to French Hill with uh, Gareth Naka, and we'll uh, we'll start working on Uptown and maybe the Miskatonic University next. So we get our upkeep for Tommy. There's the Dendromorphosis. That is a bit of a bummer. I would have liked to have uh, grabbed that with my uh, weakness thing there, but that's okay. And then Norman, he draws the uh, Research Librarian, revealing De David Renfield from the top of the deck, and I need to consider what needs to go here. Um, I think that I can afford to just drop the Earthly Serenity and a single Research Librarian. Reason being, we have the Lion and the Unicorn available for the Horror or Damage. Uh, once the Arm Injury comes into play. And David can kind of shore up my health once I get him into play as well. At the end of the upkeep, we draw an extra card for Alice, and that goes right there. Um, put Lack of Compassion into play next to Alice. Uh, I think that is just a card. I don't think that this actually is forced to go into play on like these. Like, once I get three weaknesses, I have to play a weakness. But I don't have to do this right now. I probably will, because it's got a pretty milk toast effect. But before determining that, we'll be placing a Doom, three out of seven, and checking out our encounter cards for Tommy. Griffin of the Mock Turtle. Great. Uh, that cancels the attack of opportunity. And then... Deepening Dusk. The attached location gets plus one Shroud. Shadow enemies at the attached location get plus one Fight and plus one Horror. It's a bit of a bummer to get that there. He might have to clear that off. I'm not 100% sure yet. Norman gets a Living Eclipse. Massive. His location gets plus two Shroud. Each location connected to the Living Eclipse location gets plus one Shroud. Oh man, he does no way to get away from this guy right now. Uh, the one saving grace here is that he doesn't actually have Hunter, so he's got Massive, sure. 
And this is plus two shroud, sure. This is plus one shroud, and this is plus one shroud. That's a bummer. But if we move out, we're taking a bit of damage, and we're pretty safe afterwards. Which is great, because we do have a shortcut in our hand. So let's go ahead and play shortcut. Take his turn first. Right, forgot. Let's do Alice, actually. Lack of compassion. I think we're just going to go ahead and get that one uh, out of her hand. Uh, so when an investigator heals any amount of damage or horror, that investigator heals one damage or horror less. But fortunately, that's not hitting us too hard this turn. So yeah, we'll go ahead and use the shortcut on Norman to head over to Uptown. We're going to go ahead and use the ability on Uptown to search our deck or discard pile for a weakness and draw it. If we drew a weakness, discover two clues on Uptown. Which is going to be a paranoia. We're going to lose two resources and take a new top card, which is somehow still David Renfield. No, I know why it is. Because I forgot to shuffle. A guts. Cool. And we'll get two clues from the location. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and use the Astronomical Atlas to put the guts onto the Astronomical Atlas. We see a sixth sense. That is incredible. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a resource. And then we're going to draw the top card of our deck, which is going to be Sixth Sense. We're going to use Foresight to call out that the top card of our deck is Sixth Sense. And we're going to play that card immediately at minus two cost. So we get our Sixth Sense into play. We reveal a new card from the top of the deck, which is unfortunately Arm Injury. Okay. Uh, it can be healed as if it were a single point of damage on you. After you take a fight or activate action, you cannot take any types of those actions for the remainder of the turn. Which is a bit of a bummer. Um... <laughs> because we did just chuck away that uh, thing there. But uh, hopefully we get to kill an enemy soon, and we can each heal damage and horror, and I can get rid of that. And the next card on the top of the deck is a Divination, which of course is kind of what I've been looking for most of this time, but Sixth Sense and Divination will both do fine for that. For Tommy, we're going to go ahead and take a move action, ending up at the Miskatonic University. And then I think we're going to take yet another move action, and proceed down to Uptown. And we're also going to take the action on the uh, location, pulling a Psychosis out of our deck, and getting the two clues, which is going to, uh, if there are no clues in Uptown, flip it. For Shroud location, the same with all the haunts. Arkham's woods unravel and twist back into their familiar, but foreboding forms, giving you little peace of mind. So now, these are becoming, this is becoming a minus four, and we're going to have to be careful about whether this is a minus two or a minus four a bit more often. And one thing that I did forget to do is after an investigator discovers the last remaining clue at your location, we're going to play the crack the case. We're going to give ourselves a one, two, three resources on Norman, and one, two, three resources on Tommy. Uh, three, because we have that plus one shroud on the location at the moment. Actually, come to think of it, it may be just the, 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 the five total. So, this is a six-shroud location. If there are no clues on it, you flip it, which is a force-triggered ability uh, when, that is going to be like at, when, if, after uh, the last clue is removed, I believe, because it's worded as a constant ability. I, I believe this flips, and it's a five-shroud location that I've cleared when I go to play Crack the Case. So I do think I, I take one less resource onto Tommy. Not 100% sure about that, but again, don't want to get too bogged down in the rules, so we'll just grim rule it and say he gets a little bit less money. At the end of the enemy phase, Grothnaka is going to hunt to us. We're going to get our upkeep on Tommy. Rookie mistake. Uh, we don't have anything with damage or horror on it right now, so we shuffle it back into the deck. And then for Norman, he's going to get his divination, and we see a hypochondria. Oh dear, lots of weaknesses all at once. The lack of compassion goes away, and she draws. Still ticking. Move all doom from all enemies and treacheries in play to still ticking. At the end of the round, discard still ticking. Wow, that is incredible. Saving that for a rainy day. Four of seven doom. And encounters for Tommy. We get the caterpillar. After the last clue is discovered from any location, each investigator may draw a card. We'll be saving that for a rainy day. Mental exhaustion. Put into play next to the agenda deck. Investigators, including Alice, cannot draw cards during upkeep. As an additional cost to take the draw action, Take a horror. At the end of the round, discard one copy of Mental Exhaustion, max once per round. Considering cancelling that with Norman. Oh, I forgot to reveal my next top card. Um, but at the same time, I feel like we're good on cards in hand, and she has some options of what she can do. So, might save that for something a bit more impactful. 
Humpty Dumpty heads up into our uh, list of guys that help us out, and we get edge of your vision. Text, test X willpower. X is equal to your location shroud. If you fail, search the encounter discard pile for a shadow enemy and spawn engaged with you, etc., etc. Okay. Um, so, we are at a 4 plus 1. That's a 5 shroud location. So we're going to go ahead, commit the guts from our astronomical atlas, and do Eureka from our hand. That'll put us 4 up, 9 against 5. The tablet, which we can cancel if we want to. And I think I will, because that would make it so that we get fewer cards from guts, uh, if that happens. So we'll go ahead, cancel that token, don't reveal another token, and then discard Humpty Dumpty. So this is going to be passing the test. Um, so that's gone. He's gone. We're going to use Eureka to look at the top three cards of the deck and draw one of them intentionally. Let's draw the Livre Die Ball. Come on. Come on, beautiful. All right, we'll fix that in a sec. Those go back in. That goes away. Shuffle, and then two more cards, a shortcut, and a holy rosary. Let's see if we can fix it now. No, of course not. There we go. And then the top card that we reveal is another holy rosary. Great. Now at the start of the investigation phase, let's go ahead and grab the Queen's Justice into play. I feel like now is as good a time as any. It is going to deal a damage to what's-his-face at the end of the investigator phase. Uh, it's not going to defeat anyone, but it'll deal some damage. And then we are also going to have Alice uh, scoot out of the location. Um, let's have her go to French Hill. So over on Tommy, we're going to go ahead with him first. Uh, we're going to get rid of the standard morphos morphosis, taking a direct damage. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and move out of the location. Over to our friend, the Living Eclipse. And after that, we're going to go ahead and attack him once with our Executioner's Axe. We're at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 with Bandolier. Uh, 9 against 5. It's a minus 2, so we deal uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 damage, which defeats the Living Eclipse, sending him to the victory display. Uh, okay, so after an enemy is defeated or discarded. We each investigator may heal one damage or one horror, so we're going to heal one damage from Tommy, and we're going to heal the arm injury off of Norman. And then after you defeat an enemy, we're also going to, for one resource, play Glory to draw two cards, an Overpower, and a Combat Training. That's good to see. Finally, we're going to draw one more card. Uh, actually, no. You know what? We're going to be a little inefficient about it, but we're going to just play the Ever Vigilant, getting Becky into play for one resource and the Dormouse into play for two resources. And then we're just going to play the, uh, the combat training fast as well. So we're sitting pretty on Soak. Plenty of uh, horror to place there um, to keep combat training alive. And maybe it'll actually provide us its bonuses. And also the Bandolier is giving us plus one willpower. So we're, pretty, we're sitting really heavy on stats. We're at uh, four, three, six, three, I believe which is pretty pretty good. I'm happy with that. And now Norman, uh, he's going to go ahead and shortcut out of there, heading up to the Miskatonic University. It just occurred to me that my guts should have gone to hand uh, from that Astronomical Atlas commitment, so that's going to hand. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get rolling on this turn. We're going to be using Sixth Sense a bunch of times. I just want to figure out exactly how I'm going to make that work. So first things first, <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to put the Holy Rosary on the Astronomical Atlas, revealing the next card of the deck. Okay. And then we're going to investigate the location using the Sixth Sense. So we're at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 against 5. And let's go 9, 10, 11 against 5. The Tablet, which is currently a minus 4, but we can now choose a revealed location up to two connections away from your location and be investigating that as if we were at the chosen location in addition to this location. So we're going to go ahead and choose the French Hill. I think that that's probably my best bet. Um, so we're going to pick up a clue from there and the French Hill. Actually, no, you know what? We're going to pick it up from here and the Merchant District because we'll be able to move to the French Hill and keep grabbing over from that. Uh, and I think that'll, that'll work out a bit better. There we go. 
Uh, we're using the lower shroud value, so we get to uh, get two cards from Guts. So one, two. And then the Holy Rosary was on the Astronomical Atlas, so it goes to our hand at the end of the test. Come on. Come on, beautiful. All right, and then we will go ahead and investigate again with Sixth Sense. Uh, this time we'll commit just the Holy Rosary from our hand. So we'll be at four, five, six, seven, eight against five. Minus one, that's a clue off our location. And then last action, we'll go ahead and do that one more time, committing the other Holy Rosary. Again, four, five, six, seven, eight against five skull, uh, which is currently a minus two because Alice doesn't have any damage on her. And we also get to choose another location to grab a clue from. Uh, this time, let's go ahead and grab one from the French Hill. There we go. Pretty successful turn, I think, from Norman. Grothnaka, at the end of the enemy phase, is going to hunt to a location with the most investigators. We're going to go ahead and choose Tommy's location. Pretty easy spot. Tommy's going to do his upkeep. Gret. And Norman, I forgot to do reveal his top card. It's just an, uh, an Arcane Enlightenment. He's going to do his uh, upkeep. And we're going to have to make a choice about what to lose. I think we're going to go ahead and lose this Enraptured. We don't actually have anything with charges right now. And we're investigating with willpower, so it's not doing us a ton of good. Just remembering, we're not actually drawing during our upkeep phase. So none of that was actually going to happen. Apologies. Same deal with Alice. Um, at the end of the investigator phase, we deal one damage to each enemy in play. Well, we don't deal damage to what's-his-face. Uh, at the end of the round, we discard that. Uh, she doesn't draw up during her upkeep because of this effect here, and then at the end of the round, this gets discarded. Go up to five out of seven Doom. And an encounter card for Tommy as another Deepening Dusk, plus one Shroud to the location. Nice spot for it to go. And for Norman, another Deepening Dusk. Ooh. wonder if I should cancel that. I feel like plus one Shroud right now is not that big of a deal. But I'm a little worried about it. It might be tough to get the clues here. I'm not sure. I might have to go up to the two shroud location and just grab them from there and reach over. Yeah, that's what I'll do. The three shroud location, nonetheless. All right, so now it's Alice's uh, little moment. I'll take a look at what she can put into play. Uh, I think we're going to keep the still ticking just as a, you know emergency exit button for moving all doom from enemies and treacheries to it later on in the scenario just in case that becomes a problem so we'll put alice's courage into play when an investigator engages or becomes engaged with an enemy that investigator may draw a card not gonna happen this turn not that big of a deal now looking at the board state i'm a little i'm, I'm wondering if norman ends up getting the last of the clues in, the, in our uh, our act advances uh, maybe i should leave tommy available to do something against Garathnaka just because i don't know what's coming up so i think i'm going to go ahead with norman first so we're going to keep on what we've been doing. We're going to use Astronomical Atlas to put the Enlightenment there. I did shuffle this deck uh, off screen, so that goes on top now. That's nice to see. Uh, good to have there, for sure. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and investigate. So we're, again, we're at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 against 5. Another skull. Oh, man, we're getting really lucky off these. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the two clues off of both of these. And that's going to make it so that we flip both the Miskatonic University to a four shroud location and the French Hill to a three shroud location. Then we also draw this uh, Arcane Enlightenment after the test. Oh, and when we when we discover the clues, we can play a Crack the Case, which we are going to do because we've already done our paranoia. So we're at uh, one, two, three, four, five, I think, because of the plus one shroud. Yeah, five. We're going to go ahead and. Uh, one, two, three, play this divination with a bunch of charges on it, and then head up to the final location. Hopefully we can get all of those in one action and be all set for the next step of the camp, uh, the scenario. Didn't happen this round, but that's okay. Uh, so we're going to move away with Tommy to any of the uh, other locations, and we're just going to discard this psychosis. It's a little too dangerous to keep into play. Um, really just don't want to take a bunch of direct damage in the finale. It's, there's no sense in that, and we're all set up to fight right now. So I think it's a pretty safe thing to do. Uh, between which he moves to, let's go ahead and say the French Hill, I guess. It doesn't really matter, um, because he's going to be moving 
to one of them anyways, and he'll be adjacent to every location, so it doesn't matter where we, where we go at that point. He, he's going to catch us. Uh, and so he does hunt to us at the end of the enemy phase. And then we do our upkeep for Tommy. Gets that 45 Thompson. I also shuffled his deck. The Gret was not on top. And then Norman gets the draw of his other ward, and the next Astronomical Atlas is on top. That'll be nice to get into play. Alice's Courage is going to get uh, discarded at the end of the round, and we're going to get Shadow, Shadow Strain and Alice's Patience. So this is setting her intellect to one at the end of the round, deal damage or horror to her, and discard Shadow Strain. Okay, so this is what would have made those skulls more nasty, so we'll, we'll hold off on that. After an investigator resolves a test where he or she committed a skill card to that test, that investigator may draw a card. Okay, we've already we've already seen that once, right. Uh, and now we get 6 out of 7 Doom. And over on Tommy, we get his encounter card, Weakening Boundary. Attach Weakening Boundary to the location with the most clues. Ah, bummer. At the end of the investigator phase, place one clue, two instead if there are three or four players, on the attached location from the token bank, or place a Doom on Weakening Boundary. If it's Act 2, you cannot choose to place clues. Test 3 Willpower. If you succeed, discard Weakening Boundary. If the location is flipped, discard Weakening Boundary. Ooh, interesting. Okay. That's great. So we're probably going to be getting rid of that with uh, just doing a Divination. But let's see if we can actually do the Divination. Limits of Control. For each weakness in Alice's hand, deal 1 damage or 1 horror to her. For each copy of Shadow Stain in it, deal 1 additional horror. If there are no weaknesses, well, you know what? Whoops. I think that's one that I just don't want to see. Bye-bye. Uh, and Hypochondry is for when I take damage, so no harm, no foul. Okay, let's go ahead and do what I said. Norman's going to do a big uh, divination on, on this location, flip it, and get rid of the weakening boundary all in one action. But first, we're going to put Patience into, the, uh, into play here. After an investigator resolves a test, we draw a card, if we committed a skill card to it. And we are going to move Alice. Um, <clears throat> let's move her over to the Miskatonic Mu uh, University, I think. It seems like a better spot to put her so that Grothnaka doesn't come wallop us. So we'll go ahead and investigate the location with Divination. We're going to go ahead and also use our uh, Intellect. Astronomical Atlas is going to put an Astronomical Atlas onto itself. And then we're going to commit the Astronomical Atlas and a Perception. So we're going to be at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 against like 2, right? Minus 1. Spend our 3 charges to get 3 clues. We're going to add the Astronomical Atlas to hand at the end of the test. Perception draws us David Renfield. And let's go grab those clues. Once we've got the clues, this location flips. When that flips, this gets discarded. And now there, there are no Wonderland locations in play. We must immediately advance. Separating fantasy. With Alice's attempt to repel her own dreams from the real world, you focus on your memories of the people and places of Arkham. Each routine sound, unique scent, and memorable hallmark of the city that you can recall helps to separate the two worlds and redefine the boundaries. As you peel away Wonderland from Arkham, the impossible jumble that you left behind in the north side and downtown districts begins to rearrange. The overwhelming darkness begins to concentrate at the spot where Alice's house once appeared, each shadow being drawn inevitably toward it. Garethnaka stutters, as if attempting to exist in multiple realities at once, bellowing with abominable fury as it too is drawn towards the growing void. Put the set aside north side, downtown, east town, and vacuous void locations into play. Move each investigator and weakness enemy to east town. Flip Growth Naka and move it to Vacuous Void. Discard all other enemies and remove each other location from the game. East Town has always been considered one of the safer districts due to the police presence, but in these circumstances, it's just as vulnerable as the others. It's a three-shroud location. After you fail a test by two or more at East Town, place a clue on East Town from the token bank. With an action resigned, there's no possible hope of repelling Growth Naka, but there may still be a way to save yourself. Victory won. And the flip to Growth Naka, the Jaws of Defeat, He's a 5-6-5 enemy, massive retaliate alert. Gains plus 6 health per investigator, so he's at 18 health. Cannot be defeated by damage. Cannot make attacks of opportunity during move actions. At the end of the enemy phase, if Gurath Naka is ready, add 1 doom to the current agenda. Oh, wow. Darkest Before Dawn. Though the Void draws 
the shadows and last vestiges of Alice's dreams, Garethnaka resists its pull, its continued howls reverberating in your bones. Its indescribable voice speaks to a primal fear within you, but the only way to survive this nightmare is to banish the Eater of Dreams. At the start of the Investigator phase, the Investigators as a group must choose and play one card from Alice's hand, then you may move Alice to any connecting location. Then, uh, sorry, uh, reaction when you would discover any amount of clues, even if your location has no clues on it, you may place that many of your clues on Gurath Naka instead. If there are more clues on Gurath Naka than it has remaining health, advance. Okay, so I guess the name of the game is to discover as many clues as we can, and uh, use those discovered clues to instead place our clues onto Gurath Naka. So let's go ahead and start investigating our location again with the divination. Uh, we'll go ahead and do an enraptured, and let's just commit this other astronomical atlas to the test. Um, actually, do we, we don't need to. We really are quite high on our skill value. So we'll be at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 against 3. Let's go ahead and hit that up. Ooh, there's a curse. So we're at 7 against 3. That's minus 4 total of 9 against 3. That's a success. Um, and we're doing it with the, the divination. So we're going to spend um, 3 charges to put 1, 2, three clues onto Gareth Naka. Remove that curse token from the bag. And then we'll use the Enraptured to put a charge onto the Divination again. And we'll do one more Investigate, this time with a Sixth Sense. Four, five, six, seven against three. Pulling an Auto Fail. Bummer. And after we fail a skill test by two or more at East Town, we place a clue on East Town from the token bank. That'll be useful because Sixth Sense will let me pick that clue back up later. So now we're looking out for Tommy Muldoon, and Tommy just needs to be very ready to blast the hell out of this guy. Uh, and to that effect, I think that I need to sit around drawing a couple of extra cards, and I might right now take my marksmanship shot against Grethnaka first. So let's do that first. Uh, we'll be attacking him for four, five, six... Sorry, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll go ahead and pay one more with combat training to push us up to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine against five. An auto fail. That sucks. Okay, well, that's a little wasted, but that's okay. Um, and then we'll go ahead and draw a card. Okay, and we'll take a resource as well, because we might want to get one of those into play. We're going to be running out of ammo off Becky pretty soon. So at the end of the enemy phase, he is going to move to me. And he is ready at the end of the enemy phase, so we add a Doom to the current agenda. Not that big of a deal because it's not advancing yet. We'll do our upkeeps. Tommy gets a survival knife. That might have been nice to see a little bit sooner, but that's okay. And Norman gets the bellman and a resource. We see divination on top. Now Alice needs to get rid of Alice's patience, and we draw an additional card. We get the Royal Decree. Each investigator other than Alice may gain up to four resources. Pay playing assets or events does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Wow, I think we're going to be doing that for sure. Um, that's awesome. So we get a Doom, and then we advance. Psychological Warfare. Alice leans against a partially demolished building as another ungodly roar rips through the air. Her efforts are slowing the shadows from crossing over into Arkham, but her body and spirit are being quickly overtaxed. Deal one damage or one horror to Alice. If this resolving this effect would defeat her, R2. Okay, so we need to choose whether it's going to be a damage or horror, and I need to take a look at my guy's damage and horror, and kind of evaluate whether the skull being minus four is worse for them or not. So a reminder... If there's more total damage and horror on Alice than your investigator, it's a minus four. So regardless of what I put, that's not going to be true. So we'll just go ahead and place a horror on her. Mass Consumption. Gareth Naka leads its shadows in consuming any and all material they can claw apart, animal, vegetable, or mineral. A dark void radiates out in their wake, emptier than ever, sorry, emptier even than the void of space. Alice cannot take control of the Cheshire Cat. Enemies cannot engage, attack, or target Alice when moving via the Hunter keyword. At the end of the enemy phase, move him one location towards the location with the most investigators forced if Alice is defeated. R2, 7 Doom. 
and encounter cards for Tommy. Mental Exhaustion. Cannot draw cards during the upkeep. There's an additional cost to take the draw action, take a horror. And then over here for Tommy, we get Nonsensical. We'll shuffle any number of cards from your hand back into your deck and draw an equal amount of cards. For each card you do not shuffle back into your deck, lose one resource. Oh, interesting. Kind of feeling like it's not a big deal for me to just turf my whole hand. Any amount of cards from your hand back into your deck? Yep. Four, five, six. How many is that? Is that all eight? Yeah, that's eight. So we'll shuffle all this whole thing in, and we'll draw eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfectly fine. Actually quite good, I think. Um, that's awesome. Anyways, that's going to surge. And we get a Living Eclipse. Oh no! Not this guy. That sucks. We don't have a shortcut to get away from him, so we're going to have to waste time on this. Okay, so Tommy's going to go first. He's going to go ahead and hit that big guy that just popped out with uh, the Executioner's Axe. He's going to be swinging... Four, five, six, seven against five. Let's go eight, nine, ten against five. Minus four. So that's six against five. So I only get to draw one card, but I deal two damage to him. The Strange Refreshments. Interesting. Oh, well, I forgot to put the Royal Decree into play. Um, I'll just get that out now. Each investigator other than Alice may gain up to four resources. Playing assets or events does not provoke attacks of opportunity. We'll just go ahead with that. So, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And then after that, we're actually just going to do some attacks against Degrowth Naka himself, I think. So, we're going to shoot once with Becky into Degrowth Naka. It's uh, four, five, six, seven, eight against his value. An Elder Sign. You may move up to two damage and a horror from a Tommy to an asset you control or vice versa. But I think I'm going to go ahead and use hers instead. Oh, no, I can't because Gareth Nock is at my location, right? That's right. Okay. Oh, never mind. No, he doesn't seem to have that ability anymore, right? There, there's there's him on the backside. Can't use Alice's Elder Sign effect during attacks or Theta attempts against him, but now I can. So, great. So we're going to go ahead and choose and shuffle a card from our discard pile back into our deck. We're going to grab a Vicious Blow and deal two damage to him with Becky. Uh, and then we're going to uh, play the Survival Knife from our hand. Um, not triggering any attacks of opportunity because of the ability provided to us by the Royal Decree here. And next, on good old Norman, we're going to go ahead and um, pop a Storm of Spirits into play for one, two, three. Uh, this is using willpower instead of combat, obviously, so we're at one, two, uh, sorry, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, and let's go eleven against 5, minus 4, so 11 against 5 is 7 against 5, so I succeed by 2, give me an action back, uh, but I also deal 3 damage to each enemy at my location, which is going to defeat the Living Eclipse, and put 5 damage on Gareth Naka. Oh, how sweet it is. It's also going to have us draw 2 cards with Guts. There's the Miss of Rilia that I've been waiting to see, dying to see, this whole scenario. Um, we can currently play assets without triggering a Tox of Opportunity, and we also have a lot of uh, slots. So we're going to go ahead and 1-2, play the Miss of Rilia, and then attempt an Evade against him. That Evade is going to have a difficulty of 5, so we're going to be at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's go 9-10 against 5. Uh, that's a minus uh, two, I believe. Either that or minus four it is. Either way, we're passing. But we do have to uh, choose and discard a card from our hand. Well, I think that's going to be the David. He's, he don't need the money, and I don't need the boost anymore. But we do get to evade him, and we do get to move a location. So we're going to go ahead and move down to, let's say, I'm not sure. Let's check out the vacuum. Let's check out downtown. Whoops person. After you resolve a test at downtown where three or more skill icons were committed, take a horror. Ugh. Victory won. Oh, you know what, though? That probably That's probably like controllable horror so that you can stay above the curse. That's fine. Okay. Um, and so last action, we're just going to investigate with six cents. We're at four, 
five, six, seven against the current shroud value, we get an elder thing, which is currently minus two because we're not at Gareth Naka's location. We get the trigger six cents, so we're gonna discover a clue from our location, so spending one to put it on Gareth Naka, and then we're also going to get a clue from the location adjacent to us. So I'm just gonna put this one here and then put that one back on my card there. So we've effectively done nine of the 18 damage that we need to do to Gareth Naka. Um, he's not going to move, I don't think, because this is the location with the most investigators, and then also he's not ready, so we don't add a doom to the current agenda. So we're going to get an upkeep phase over on Tommy. I take the initiative, that's good to see. And then our upkeep phase over on Norman is going to put that research librarian and put the bellman back on top of his deck, and that's also fine. So the, she can't draw cards during her uh, upkeep here. Oh, whoops, what are those doing out? Uh, so that's getting discarded, the mental exhaustion is getting discarded. And then we get a Doom, and encounter cards on Tommy. We flip the Cheshire Cat. Not what I want to see right now. I need more chances to pass. The Insatiable Shade, Hunter Alert. His damage and horror values are one less than Gareth Naka's damage and horror values. Oh no, so he's a 2-2. Two, two. That is yucky. And then Norman gets the Dodo, cancels the Skull. And the Shadowy Gorger, aloof, spawn furthest location from all investigators. At the end of the enemy phase, if he is ready and un unengaged, place a doom on it. Oh dear. Well, we might be able to kill Gareth Naka off this, this turn. Let's, let's, let's check. So he's going to flop over here to the north side. I'm going to go ahead and run Norman's turn first. I'm going to go one, two, three to play this divination out of my hand. I believe I still have slots. How many is this total? One, two, three, four, five. And I would normally have one, two, arcane, one, uh, and I have an extra accessory and an extra arcane, so I'm good. Uh, and then we're going to investigate our location um, with the divination. We're at a three shroud location. So we're going to be at five, six, seven, eight against three. That's minus four total. So we spend one, two, three clues. Sorry, one, two, three charges to move one, two, three clues to Gareth Naka. And then we'll go ahead and just do that again. Um, five, six, seven, eight against three. A skull, which is currently minus two. Uh, and we can cancel that if we want to, but we don't want to. So we're gonna go one, two, three, do the exact same thing to go one, two, three. Come on, did I get three or did I only get two? Yeah, I only got two, come on. Three, there we go. To put three more clues on Gareth Naka. So now he's got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He only needs three more damage to be defeated. Oh, right. Um, I guess it should have been obvious a couple minutes ago that I put Still Ticking into play rather than uh, the Shadow Strain. Also, he's obviously not uh, exhausted right now. So let's go ahead and see if we can do it with uh, with Tommy. We've got a cancel for a skull. We've got uh, last clues discovered on the caterpillar. But if we succeed by one, we do automatically fail. So we got to be careful with how much we're committing to this. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fight him. We're going to be at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten against five. That's not bad. There's a couple minus fours, so we'll commit one icon to it. Get out of here. To be eleven. And eleven against five. Um, puts us, I believe this is like this right now. I'm not at a Wonderland or a Shadow location. 11 against 5 puts us at beating the whole bag. Except the minus 5 is still an auto fail. But I think that's odds I'm willing to take on one test. So let's pull it. Get the Elder Sign. Oh, super cool. All right. So we're going to go ahead and choose Alice's Elder Sign. We're going to put this uh, Overpower back into the deck. And we're going to deal 2 damage to Gareth Naka. So he's at 7 damage. So we're going to go ahead and swing at him with the Survival Knife to get plus 2 to fight. So we're at 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And a 0. So he's toast. 8 plus the 10 there. That's his threshold. If there are more clues on Gareth Naka than it has remaining health, advance. Amid the rushing vacuum of the darkness, through the wavering fissure, Gareth Naka claws at Arkham greedily, 
Each time you repel the monster, drawing from your recent experiences to weaken its grip through the dimensions, Alice focuses every fiber of her will on maintaining stability while you unravel the portal and sever Gurathnaka's attachment to Arkham. Weary minutes pass until finally a breakthrough. The shadowy abomination falls through the endless void, still reaching towards you with empty hunger. It's through, Alice cries, though you cannot make a reply before the rift searchers itself shut, and a ripple bursts forth from the point of exit, knocking you off your feet. Resolution 5. Thrown to the ground from the force of the collapsing rift, you hunker down as gale force whips all around you. Reality is reordering in a fantastic event, a complete reversal of the chaos that briefly collapsed the north side and downtown districts. You dig your fingers into the gaps of the cobblestones, holding on for dear life amid the chaos. From a nearby lamppost, Alice looks to you with uncertainty, and your eyes meet for a brief second before your vision is blinded with dazzling light. When your eyes open next, you are greeted by the drab wallpaper and dim lighting of one of St. Mary's hospital rooms. You sit up unsteadily, memories of your last moments of the battle hazy and scattered. Your thoughts aren't fully sorted by the time a nurse enters with a small meal for you. You're awake already. Can you remember the last thing that happened to you? You probe with general questions, trying to figure out just what has happened to Arkham, but the nurse isn't concerned in the least. The shadows, the brief overlap with Wonderland, and the distorting chaos all fall to get any reaction out of her, other than a suspicious smile. Now, it's none of my business, but you really ought to be more careful if you're, um, drinking anything stronger than water. Next time, you could end up with more than a few bruises. Don't worry, your secret's safe here. You attempt to reason with the nurse, but she simply pats you on the hand and insists you eat. Frustration takes a back seat to practicality, and you accept the food reluctantly, though you still insist that you be given a newspaper as soon as possible. In your campaign log, record that the investigator separated Alice's dreams from the real world. In your campaign log, record that Gurath Naka and its shadows were banished from Arkham. Each investigator suffers one physical trauma and one mental trauma as the journey through Wonderland has seriously affected them. Each, investigators, each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. So I've got uh, two locations and those two enemies. The investigators win. Awesome! Great. And we'll go on to the epilogue. Read the following only if the investigators won the campaign. You scour the newspapers in the days you're confined to the hospital bed for recovery. Throughout all of them, you can't find any mention of the catastrophic, catastrophic events that nearly consumed Arkham. You had hoped to preserve the city as much as possible, but it's almost insulting how little remains to prove your mission's success. The possibility of it all being an invention of your own mind occurs, but you have no time to consider before the nurse returns to your bedside. Excuse me, but if you're feeling well enough, a, visit a visitor is here to see you. You sit up in bed with a surge of excitement as Alice enters your room with a small smile. You both wait for the nurse to give you some privacy before she clasps your hands tightly. You've done it, Alice breathes, trying not to shout with joy. The relief on her face is plain to see, and she looks far better than she did when you first saw her on the train and in the asylum. I truly can't thank you enough, especially as the evidence of all your struggles has all been returned to Wonderland. You've done me and the world at large an incredible service. You assure Alice that most of your adventures seem to escape the public, public's eye, but you would have done it all again in spite of the risks. Alice settles down onto your bedside, and for a brief moment, her smile dips with sadness. You ask Alice how she's been holding up amid all, amidst all this, as the key piece of Gurth Naka's plot. I don't quite know yet, she replies with a far-off look in her eye. I may never be the same again after all that happened, and this may not yet be the end. I know that the shadows aren't gone for good. I can still feel them grasping at the edge of my dreams. Alice looks back to you gratefully, and her smile returns. But for the first time in over a decade, I can sleep without fear, both for myself and for the world around me. You think back on your journey through Wonderland, and you ask Alice about what has befallen her strange dreams. If there are 19 tally marks, skip to Wonderland. Wonders Never Cease. Wonderland has never been better, Alice declares happily. They may all be mad, but I've come to love each of them dearly, for all their faults, and I am even more deeply indebted to you for protecting and even teaching them at great personal risk. Alice embraces you with a grateful hug, taking care not to press on your injuries. Each investigator earns eight bonus experience. Proceed to Alice's fate. But please, tell me of what happened while you were in Wonderland, Alice pries gently. Even if nobody else in the world believes the sacrifices you've made for them, I know them to be true. You begin to weave the tale of your journey, and Alice listens intently, as if hearing of Wonderland for the first time again. You soon discover that your audience has doubled, as the ethereal grin of the Cheshire Cat appears above Alice's shoulder. 
and its head materializes from time to time, listening as eagerly as Alice herself. The minutes pass until finally the nurse intrudes once more. I'm afraid that visiting hours have ended, she says cheerfully, before ducking out to pass the same message on to other rooms. Alice rises with a final clasp of your hands, resolution clear in her face. I've decided, she states plainly, I'm going to remain here in Arkham. You, you raise your eyebrow in surprise. Few people who know the mysteries and horrors of this town live to recount them, and fewer still willingly face more. I've learned from several others in the city here that Arkham has many mysteries of its own. If I can help to solve even one of them, and perhaps, then perhaps I can begin to repay you for your kindness and bravery. Alice joins the investigators of Arkham. Use the seeker version of her investigator card to play as Alice in other campaigns. Wow, that is a really cool ending. Uh, wait, where's the secret version of her? I gotta go look for this now. Oh man, look at this. This is sweet. Four four two two six eight. Same ability. You can use your base uh, intellect for the skills of other investigators, and you can return cards from their discard pile. Deck building is uh, zero to five, zero to five neutral. Cards with use of secrets zero to four, and five other Mystic or Survivor cards. And then Mysteries of Wonderland further down the rabbit hole. After you spend a secret on an asset you control, draw a card or heal a horror. During a skill test you're performing, take a horror and exhaust this to get plus X for this test, where X is the highest number of secrets on an asset you control. Oh, that's cool. Four cost asset. Pretty expensive. Lost in Thought uses zero secrets. If there are four or more secrets on it, discard it. Set your base intellect to X, where X is the number of secrets on Lost in Thought. Ignore any other game effect that would change your base intellect. Move a secret from an asset you control to Lost in Thought. Cool. At the end of the round, place a resource token on Lost in Thought from the token bank as a secret. So it either lasts four turns, or you can just, like, burn through it really quick by spending up your secrets. Cool! That's a really neat investigator. Well, you know, huge thanks to the Beard for putting on that uh, campaign. That's a wonderful campaign. Uh, pretty, pretty chunky finale there, I think. That was a little tricky to get through. A lot of things going on all at once, a lot of triggers. I'm sure when I go through editing, I'll find a couple that I missed. But uh, overall, I really enjoyed the whole campaign start to finish. Um... I hope you've enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you guys in the next campaign.